Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, this is, I don't even remember what it's called. Uh, this is about the Ascend project. Um, if you were here at Open Source Bridge last year, you might remember uh, I did a keynote announcing the project taking off. And um, thanks to Open Source Bridge, to this community, to that announcement, we got a bunch of applicants for the program. And um, just a really brief thing about the program, the goal was to target people from various intersections of like low income, people of color, LGBT, um, um, people with no experience in programming, people with non-traditional educational backgrounds uh, who are looking for an opportunity to learn about open source and contributing to open source and develop their technical skills that way uh, in the hopes of building a community here uh, in Portland of people who could support each other even once the program was over. Um, so it was a six-week six kind of immersion and accelerator program, uh, and it was funded by Mozilla, which is where I worked at the time. Uh, and we ran it here in Portland last fall, September, October. And so today, uh, the goal is to kind of post-mortem it a little bit. Um, I don't want to talk too much. We have several of the participants here, so mostly this is a chance to hear their stories and then to ask them questions. Um, and then also Karanda, who ended up becoming a co-lead, which I don't think I knew at the time when I announced it. Is that correct? Oh. I got yeah, you. Yeah, no. I got you, so. locked you in in the summer, in the <laughs> June, June or so, I was yeah. like, wait a minute, me and 20 people seems like a really bad student-teacher ratio. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I called up Karanda, and she, she got on board with it. So, um, so actually, so, so I can talk about, you know, during Q&A parts, if you're interested, I can talk about things like budget and timeline, um, and maybe a little bit about methodology. Karanda can also address, like, teaching parts of it. And then uh, I will pass the mics down and have the participants just introduce themselves, maybe say a little bit about what they were doing before applying to Ascend, and maybe a little bit about what they're doing now. Before and after. Before. Okay, uh, Amanda Hool, and uh, I was a yoga teacher and a mom, and I went to code school, and then after code school, I did the Ascend project, and then I got an internship at Urban Airship, and after the internship, I was hired. Amen. Um, Mary Ann Thigason, um, I was looking for work. I learned a lot, and I'm still looking for work. There you have it. Adam's got it. So my name is Adam Okoye. Um, prior to Ascend, uh, I had, was taking a bit of time off from school. Um, and trying to figure out what I wanted to do in terms of school and or work. Um, and after Ascend, I got an OPW internship with Mozilla. Um, and now I am trying to, f well, now I'm likely going to be going back to school to finish my degree and then do translation um, in documentation stuff with, between English and German. So. Hi, my name is Becky Scheffler. I'm a stay-at-home mom before Ascend and after. But uh, I learned a lot of Send and have used that to, I don't know, like, I went to um, Railsbridge and stuff like that, just kind of dappling, oops, second time, <laughs> just dappling in uh, technology now. And there you go. Uh, I'm Barbara Miller. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Gosh, um, <laughs> I have um, was before Ascend uh, doing, um, you know, some technical consulting, um, you know, generally, you know, computer support and some system in administration. Uh, and, you know, the my kind of two key-ish clients both had big management changes within months, months of each other, and then I didn't have too much to do and wasn't making much money. And um, that gave me the time to attend OS Bridge last year when I learned about the Ascend project. And um, I thought, well, gosh, I, I could probably volunteer for some of that. But on the other hand, I haven't made an open source code contribution. So I'll, you know, I'll at least go through the motions of applying and uh, uh, ended up getting a place and uh, learning to use Git, which I certainly didn't know how to use before the Ascend project, and um, went on to an outreach program internship with Mozilla's QA department, uh, developing, um, mainly developing automated testing in Python. 
And at this point, I'm trying to uh, finish up with, you know, some of the clients I've was smaller clients I was still working with, and figure out what's next. Hi, all. My name is Yenny. And before Ascend, I had actually experienced nonprofit burnout. I was working with youth um, that experienced mental health challenges and. The majority of them actually experience co-occurring conditions, so mental health challenges and addictions. So uh, I experienced burnout because that's a little stressful for day to day. So I was like, Ascend's going to be great. I'm going to stop working with kids. And now I run STEM programs for 13-year-old girls with <laughs> Girls Inc. Um, so I'm back, and now I have more of a STEM focus. Um, I'm really excited because tomorrow we're going to work on Popcorn Maker, which is a Mozilla thing, and they're going to make music videos, and we're really excited. Great. Um, so I guess one other, uh, one other thing, maybe we can work our way do something to it. Uh, we can work our way back down the line, so starting with Yenny again. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what kind of skills you got out of sense so people have a sense of what we did in those six weeks? Oh, man. Yeah, so I like to... People ask me um, what was Ascend, and I still don't have an answer. Um, the best answer I have is it was like a full immersion study abroad program to like this whole other world, and it's called the internet. And um, there's different customs, and there's like, you know, languages. There's like code languages for things, like you have to ping people or PM. I don't. I don't remember. Um, but uh, I, I learned, essentially, how to be a citizen of the internet. Um, I was introduced to it and got an amazing tour. And I felt at home in that nice little place that we call the internet world. And uh, that's what I took from it. Uh, am I supposed to say more still? Um, um, I, you know, learned out. I, I learned that I could do more than uh, copy and paste JavaScript snippets. Um, I actually did a not entirely trivial refactoring uh, bug for M Mozilla's QA test group and got hooked up with them. And I, you know, I, I have to say, if if you know anyone who might be at all interested in that sort of thing, they're the most terrific group to work with. And um, I you know, can't imagine anyone having a better internship experience than I did with them. Um, and maybe that's enough for now. I found how to find answers and not be afraid to try. I got really well acquainted with Git, um, which proved really helpful um, with my OPW project. Um, because I uh, started, when I, when I was doing Ascend, or we were doing Ascend, I guess, um, I had originally contrib started contributing to Fjord, which is a Mozilla project, um, and then eventually got an, um, an OPW internship uh, that was also with Fjord. Uh, so yeah, I got uh, introduced to Fjord, I guess, and then also uh, introduced to Git, um, and actually really enjoy using it, uh, which is convenience. <laughs> Yeah, um, I got way better using Git on command line. Um, I learned what to do when I get my branch ahead of master and other assorted messes that I've gotten into, I can fix now. Um, and I got way better at JavaScript and, and QA, and I keep learning languages. I've added Clojure, and I'm way better at Ruby now. Um, I just jotted down some notes because I know I'll forget. Um, so I learned how to code at code school, but when I finished, I didn't have any confidence at all. Like I didn't even feel like I could put myself out there to start applying. So um, the biggest thing that I learned was that confidence and um, sometimes when our mentors didn't know exactly how to fix a thing, I was just that was a surprise to me that they didn't know everything. So it's okay not to know everything and still put yourself out there and do something. Um, I learned that dev environments are a thing. I think we set up like different dev environments. Um, I got to mentor other people because 
I had already learned how to code, but I put in my first bug fixes, and I learned about open source, which I really didn't have a clue, although, so after code school, I volunteered here, and when Lucas described the program, I think I grabbed her afterwards, and I was like, what is this thing? I have to do it. <laughs> so um, we had a code challenge, and then that was how I started to, how I started my application. I also learned how to work on a big code base. So in code school, we did small projects, and I did a projects with a couple people, but I never looked at like a big legacy code base before. And I actually got to contribute to something. So it was um, Mozilla. I worked with a little bit of um, WebMaker and a couple other things. And I changed some CSS, which I didn't really, I was like avoided it before. and and um, some Angular that I never even looked at before. Uh, so I think that was most of it. And just, um, yeah, I'm going to go back to confidence, because that was the biggest thing. And then also I wanted to say that uh, Lucas and Lennon, Dane Reynolds at Urban Airship set up the program that was the next step for me. A few of us applied. And hi, Virginia. <laughs> so I got, um, I started the internship with there, and I think that they were kind of surprised that, um, you know, they decided to, to keep us on. So, yeah. And now I'm applying a lot of what I learned and mentoring new people. I've only been there full time since January, and I'm mentoring new people already with the skills that I got here, because I can really understand how when they start and they're freaking out and just lots of coffee talks and things like that. Um, is this on? Can you hear me? Um, I learned that teaching is hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably the biggest. I mean, not that I didn't, I wouldn't assume that. I would assume teaching is hard, but like when you're in it, you're like, oh, this is hard. Um, and I, I just want to talk a little bit about um, Lisa Hewish Fresh, who also went through the program and isn't here, but. Um, invites people to dinner every Tuesday night. So I, I had dinner with her a couple Tuesdays ago, and she kind of talked through her entire like zero to developer journey, um, which was eight months. And um, she also is now working at Urban Airship. Um, and when I met, I met Lisa before Ascend, and I would see her around um, at different meetups and things. And she's wicked smart, but she also had very little confidence in her skills and her knowledge. And I just was constantly giving her pep talks. And um, you know, she would worry that, oh, I don't, I don't know enough to do this, or I don't you know, know enough to do that. And I finally said, here, read this email I got from a client. Like, it's not about WordPress. It's not about HTML. It's about the fact that I helped her do something you know, I gave her a tool that's going to help her in her business. That's all she cares about. Like, that's all people care about is the end result. Like, they don't know that you know or don't know no JS or whatever. So constantly giving her pep talks. Lucas and I basically forced her to, to apply for the Urban Airship um, internship. And um, she just has had an incredible journey. Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things that she got out of it, too. And um, so... Is it? It's not. Oh, it is. There it is. Okay. Um, can you pass that mic back down to Virginia, and we can catch her up? Virginia, can you just tell us a little bit before Ascend and after Ascend? Tell us your, when your name is. I'm going to steal your thunder for a second, but you can do your thing. <laughs> and then also, can you just talk about um, what skills you got out of Ascend? Hi, it's me, Virginia. <laughs> it's my thing. Sorry, I'm late. That's also my thing, <laughs> apparently. Um, but, uh, Man, OK. Uh, before Ascend, I had a career basically in um, administrative assistant type of work and uh, office-related tasks. And some of that was more technical, but um, like I didn't really, like I had had an intro to computer science class in college when I was 18 or 19. But uh, I was, what, 31 when Ascend started. So I had pretty much forgotten that, and everything had changed anyway. Um, but I was working in insurance, and that was not my dream. Um, so I had kind of figured that I wanted to make a transition into tech 
but uh, easier said than done. <laughs> so um, I don't know, I started looking around at courses online and then I met Lucas at um, Open Source Bridge last year and found out about this and um, applied for a cent. I was, like Lisa, I mean, like probably a lot of us, super doubtful of my own skills and worthiness and whatever. Um, so Lucas really encouraged me to apply, and I was shocked that I got in, but I shouldn't have been. <laughs> and let's see, so then um, Ascend happened. I quit my insurance job to do Ascend, and because I kind of wanted to anyway. <laughs> um, so that was a really good excuse. And, and at Ascend, I met Eva, who's um, not here, but uh, I spoke with her earlier today. She worked at a company called Agile Bits that makes the app 1Password. And she was on the customer, or is still, on the customer support team and mentioned to us that there was a position open during Ascend. And Perry, another one of us who's not here today, but I spoke with today, <laughs> um, applied for that position. I, w I didn't at the time. I, I was really trying to avoid um, going the customer support route because I was trying to like, no, I'm a serious developer. I'm a technical person. Um, and like we took the JavaScript course. And so I, I really wanted to pursue more of the development aspect and, and skip right over basically my strong suit and using all of my employment history. <laughs> uh, but um, so I was like, no, I'll hold out. And I applied for the urban airship uh, internship and didn't get that, uh, and then couldn't really find any other internships available for for a junior developer. Um, looked around. That was really, 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 really disappointing. Um, but then I uh, kept talking to Perry and Eva, and they encouraged me to go ahead and apply for the customer support position at Agile Bits. And now I work there, and it's really awesome, actually. I love it way more than I thought I would. And it is very technical, because 1Password is a really complicated app. And it's on four different platforms, and I'm still learning so much about it. And it's a small team, so I get to have um, really immediate results. Like, I make suggestions, and they're heard, and I can improve things. And uh, it's definitely a lot more of the tech job that than I thought a customer support role would be. And um, it's, yeah, I work from home now. I can have Technicolor hair and <laughs> wake up late. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's a dream job. And uh, I really owe it all to Ascend. And that's what I got out of it. Cool. <laughs> uh, so now why don't we take questions from people uh, Let's pass, I'll pass the mic around. You all answer questions. Hi, this question is for Lucas and Kronda. Um, the, you, Kronda spoke a little bit about the um, teaching, learning to teach, or I shouldn't say learning to teach because I'm sure you both have taught before, but that teaching is hard. I was wondering what approaches you tried, what worked, what didn't work? One thing that doesn't work is to, um, not leave any room for uh, teacher time. <laughs> like, I, I really, I was like, oh, I think, what did I tell you all? Like, nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. Nine to five. Uh, that's eight hours. And so then, really, it became eight to six, at least, for me and Karanda, because prepping beforehand, like, what are we going to do today? Because I did this whole thing off the side of my desk anyway, so I didn't even have curriculum going into the six week. Okay, I had the first week kind of mapped out, but um, <laughs> I mean, I had like a curve. Like I basically modeled it after how Joss Whedon talked about doing Buffy. Like I was just like, "There's this arc they're gonna go on, <laughs> and this is sort of what's gonna happen in each week." But I only had the first week kind of blocked out in days, and even that got kind of thrown out. And so it was me and Karanda every morning being like. What are we going to do today? Let's tape it into this document, print it, and it becomes an agenda. And then that's what we're going to do. And then whatever we didn't get done, we just push to the next day and push to the next day. And I was committing these things to our repo to remember later because the plan was to do it again. Um, so that was, that was one thing. We didn't have any time for that. And we discovered later we moved into a pattern of doing this. And this part worked. We moved into a pattern of having milestones based on what we thought should be accomplished each week and trying to like make sure people were meeting those so that they knew they were on track and we knew people were actually getting what they were supposed to get out of this. And so we had a spreadsheet and we did one-on-ones. And, and in the, 
the first half of the program was very hands-on, like they said, like dev environments, lots of Git stuff, lots of debugging, lots of QA. The second half, I pushed them all off a cliff, and I was like, go fix a bug. <laughs> and then we went into one-on-one -on -one mode. Like we were constantly meeting with whoever was having the most trouble. And I, I'll leave it to these folks to say, but I, in the feedback, some people did say, that kind of meant that the people who were doing well didn't get as much attention, so that didn't work. You know, um, that's, I think that's a few things for me. Um, well, it didn't work when you got sick and I had to do all the WordPress dev environment set up stuff with no prep time. <laughs> that was interesting, um, but everybody was got super food poisoning game. from a cantaloupe. <laughs> yeah, well, see, it worked for them, so that's, um, uh, what worked? Um, I think, I don't know if this falls into what works, but the fact that we recognize that we have a vast array of 20 different levels of experience and life experience and um, you know different knowledge about different things. And so we kind of went into it going, yeah, here's an arc and here's like a path. And, and Lucas had this great analogy of like, the, we're in the bike lane next to the information superhighway. <laughs> um, and so everybody gets to like pedal at kind of their own pace. And so there was no real agenda from us of like, um, this is the thing you have to learn before you can go on to the next thing. It's like, you know, we did sort of some baseline things, right? Some version control, um, dev environment setup and that kind of thing. But then it was like, what are you interested in? Well, some people are interested in design, and some people are interested in maps, and some people are interested in JavaScript. and and. So I think what worked was letting people learn based on their interests because, you know, if you, <laughs> coding is hard, right? So if you don't have like a personal stake in it, that it's just not going to work. Um, I remember meeting a woman at a meetup and she was like, I'm going to make an app. And I was like, what's your app going to be about? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, then you're not making an app. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have, you know, like something to carry you through when you've spent three hours trying to figure out that the comma's in the wrong place, like, it's, it's not gonna happen, so. Um, yeah. Other yeah. questions? Yeah. I'll let other people go. I got a zillion, I got a zillion <laughs> questions, but other people can go first. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions, or should we let someone ask one? Okay, that's fine. I don't need a microphone. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do? for oh, the video. Sorry. Because you're recording. For no, the video. No you don't have to oh, use. I understand. <laughs> got it. Um, so this is a, a retrospective of sorts, and one question that I think is useful in those is, uh, how did we define success, and were we successful? If not, what can we change? So how did you define success? All right, I think this is a good question to pass down the line to, but for me, I, I, I mostly defined success if they kept showing up, which they did. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first marker. I was like, oh, after day one, they came back. OK. That was the uh, easy no, part. but really, my goal was to have everybody fix one bug. And at the end of the program, we had 20 people in the program, 18 who completed the program. And of those 18, all but three had fixed at least one bug. And I think of the three that hadn't yet, at least, Virginia, you fixed yours after the fact, correct? I did. Uh huh. And so I think maybe one other person. So, so to me, that was a really high, high success rate. For the rest of what defines success, kind of like Corona was saying, it was very much like for each individual, where were they at the beginning? Where were they six weeks later? The fact that there was any growth in there was a wonderful thing. Um, so let's maybe have everyone just say, like, for them, did, was there a success, you know, and like what that was? Yes. I, <laughs> yes, I heard, uh, hello, I already, hold it at the bottom. Okay. Should be unidirectional. Um, I already said my success. I came out with a ton of confidence. Um, oh, I was going to say, I'm really bad at forgetting. I think the bug that I fixed was just like, I kind of just got through that, but it was mostly, yeah, the confidence. That was successful for me. Um, I define success uh, as the hard part, the team building. We were a real cohort. We were functioned as a unit. We worked together. We uh, supported each other, and to me, that was the most important is success. So that's a really good question, and one that I hadn't thought about. Um, uh, but on the spot, um, I think that kind of what Lucas was first saying, um, and maybe jokingly, that like everyone showed up, 
Um, my success, personal success wasn't that everyone showed up, um, but that I showed up every single day um, because uh, I have a lot of mental health stuff going on. Um, and so for me, actually showing up um, is really difficult. And so the fact that I was able to do that uh, was a really big success for me. Um, and like the fact that I like fixed like three or four bugs was also really great. Um, but really, like the fact that was that I showed up. Um, that was that was the biggest challenge, I guess. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. That going there was kind of hard, especially at the beginning. But we created such a f uh, strong group that at the end, it was really hard to leave it. Um, going in, I, I think more than anything else, I wanted to learn Git. <laughs> um, but. Certainly what also really fascinated me about the program was exactly who would show up for it and what what in detail it would be because, you know, as Lucas has uh, admitted, there wasn't a, a detailed curriculum in, in place beforehand. Um, and, you know, I, I was really a little unsure of it until we had a pre-meeting in July and and I saw all these wonderful people who showed up for it, and I thought, well, it's going to be great spending six weeks with them, uh, you know, no matter what happens. So um, th th those were the, the two biggest things that, that I was looking for, and I certainly got them. Yeah, so uh, I remember making it to like round two of interviews for Ascend and having a conversation with Lucas where I was asked, what would be a successful program for you? And I actually got pushed out of engineering school after two and a half years. Um, I was one of the ones that asked too many questions. I was told I was disruptive. I had a professor tell me that I should reconsider being an engineer. Um, so I left. So I told Lucas that I wanted to be in an environment where I wouldn't um, get in trouble for asking questions, where when I did ask a question, the keyboard wouldn't be taken away from me in order to show me an answer, right? And not really like explain what's going on, just like put it on the screen and move on. Um, so that, to me, going into it was really important. And I found it a very successful program because every time I asked a question, I had an explanation not just an answer, I had an explanation, and I felt that it, the program was really tailored to the participants. So to me, that's a successful program, one that is designed around the needs of the participants and really focuses on you know, the variety of experiences that are in the room. So thank you. Jessica, get up Jessica, here. get up here. <laughs> Another participant enters Sneaky the dojo. Pants. Come on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what was the question? Oh, yeah. Um, a successful, okay, I think um, I'm going to address how it was a personal success for me and how I think it was a successful program, which um, for me, my goal was to get out of a dead end job and find a career that fulfilled me um, and uh, and find a way into a career that fulfilled me, actually, and like prepare myself and actually be able to get into that. And that has definitely happened. Um, even though I'm not coding at this point, I'm actually very happy. And I'm reconsidering whether coding is all that important, because I'm working in tech, and that was more important to me anyway. Um, and it was, I think, I think the, one of the biggest goals of the program was to remove barriers. And that's exactly what it did, I think, for all of us, um, probably, uh, definitely for me, because I, I knew, like, it's, it's very intimidating to try to change careers at all, and let alone into tech, let alone as a woman, let alone when you're out, out of school, you don't have a degree in that or whatever. Um, so there, there were a lot of perceived or real barriers there for me. And just getting this experience, this introduction to all of these skills, putting that on my resume, meeting these people, this network, this support group, um, putting Mozilla on my resume, <laughs> pretty cool. Um, and, uh, and just also even opening the dialogue, like that we're having this panel that, that Lucas did the, the keynote last year here just like, Blazing a trail for more programs like this, I think, is so important for diversity in tech, and I, and I think that's one of the hugest successes of Ascent. Okay. 
Um, Jessica, can, can you catch us up with a little bit about you before Ascend, after Ascend, um, what you learned at Ascend, and what was success for you? Just, that's, that's everything. Awesome. <laughs> I'd like to begin by saying I came late to see people and was like, ah, I won't have to talk. I won't be on camera. <laughs> I just woke up from a nap because I'm sick. And I have a five-month-old daughter, so I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Uh, so before Ascend, uh, yeah, I was... I don't know, I, last Open Source Bridge conference, um, I volunteered and I was really excited and the month before I quit my dead end job and I was like, yeah, something cool in tech, I want it to happen. And I found out I was pregnant and I was like, oh, now what? <laughs> I was actually also sick at the last Open Source Bridge conference, <laughs> uh, but that was of the morning sickness and or all day sickness variety. So if you saw me rushing out of the room <laughs> at any point, it wasn't because I wasn't excited. Um, so yeah, I learned about the Ascend project there at last year's Open Source Bridge Conference. And I was like, oh, that's so perfect. I have to apply for that. I think I applied for it a couple days before um, it started. And yeah, I found it really helpful. I, I thought it was great that they, just getting everything set up on your, your laptop, like the d development environment, that's at least half the battle. <laughs> I had um, a terrible laptop that would shut off. I don't know exactly why, because it got too hot, because I was asking it to do too many things. I installed Ubuntu on it thinking like, yeah, still would crash. And I think, yeah, being able to get like a laptop and then also um, I thought it was really great that we were paid to receive training, obviously, and they just really took good care of us. Um, fed me and baby, that was great. Uh, yeah, fast forward, I, I got an outreach internship with HOT, Humanitarian Open Street Match, oh, Humanitarian Open Street Map team. That was really great. And um, yeah, I don't, I feel like right now I'm, I'm still in the thick of baby land and I, I do open source as a hobby on, on the side. And I'm, I think for once I'm hopeful that my hobby, unlike Russian poetry, <laughs> might lead me to a job one day. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, did you have yeah. a question? Yeah. Whoops. Hi. Uh, so a lot of you talked about kind of the benefits of having this cohort of people and like um, how you learned how to kind of be more um, like uh, proud of yourself and like worked through stress and things like that. So I'm kind of curious, in, so this finished, are you still like, in our, I mean, you obviously are still socializing right now in front of the room, but kind of what kind of follow up work are you all doing to like make sure you're continuing to get support when you need it? Are you involved in local community? Are you all meeting up for lunch you know, every week? Are you still talking with the teachers? Like kind of what does the aftermath look like for you? Well, I work with Eva and Perry now, <laughs> so I talk to them every day, which is awesome. And uh, we have a, a IRC chat. I just remembered the other day because <laughs> I haven't been there lately. But it's there, and knowing it's there is nice. Uh, that's about it for me. <laughs> I'll add that um, I think four four of us got this not the same, but outreaching internships, and um, three of us, Barbara. Adam and I gave a, gave a talk at this open source bridge and coordinated on that about our internship experience. That was fun. And we've met up to talk about it and not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, um, as far as community goes, I am trying to propel the movement. So I'm working with youth in order to teach them what I learned, um, having an open and affirming space, you know, um, being open to learning, essentially being open to like, struggling together. So um, I definitely bring that to my new STEM environments with 13-year-old girls, which is terrible. Um, and as far as with the cohort, I have met up for drinks with some folks, and it has been a blast. Um, I, I think you know there, there's been a little bit of traffic on the email list very occasionally, and the IRC channel is still there. Um, and I've seen most of these people at one event, you know, one tech event or another, uh, um, and I'm always very happy to see people. Um, you know, as Je Jessica's already mentioned, that we gave a talk yesterday, and um, and apart from all that, uh, I've been fairly active with Pi Ladies and 
uh, Women Who Hack and um, I think there's something else that I'm forgetting, but maybe that's enough. I haven't done a whole lot socially or socially with them, but it's been really nice when I am able to go to meetups or stuff to see a familiar face, especially with social anxieties. Um, so I haven't really met up with the group as a whole, um, but I've done, Jessica and I um, meet up on a very regular basis, actually. Um, and I also talk to Eva on a very, on a more or less daily basis. And then Lucas and I, um, at least once a month when I'm good about being on Skype, um, uh, have like one-on-one -on -one chats, which we decided to, to do for my OPW internship and then we just kept on doing, so. Well, I um, haven't met much hold with, it up. Uh, is it talking? Just hold it up. Like. Oh, like this. Okay, I haven't met much with this group, but I'm out going to lots and lots of tech meetups and, and coding on my own. And just because I like being with people, so I'm out every night. <laughs> um, so... I, um, I'm a SMC, single mom, and working full time is really intense to, um, I haven't, I don't do a ton socially, but I co-organize two meetup groups, and both of them are fostering a mentorship environment in tech. So I get a lot of inquiries from that, and I do, I go out to coffee with people and help people that are trying to get into tech. And um, one of the things that was my goal before starting this was learning how to contribute to open source. So I'm able to now pay it forward and help lots of people, whether it's with Mozilla or Django or something like anything like that, help people get into their experience um, doing open source. Uh, and also I'm really lucky that Urban Airship, like uh, I think my first time in the ladies' bathroom, another engineer was like, Oh my gosh, there's two women at the same time in the female bathroom. What's your name? We have to go to lunch. And so the women there are really supportive of each other and there's, you know, two other women just started and so I did the same for them and now we <laughs> do coffees all the time. So in my as much time as I can I hang out and um and then I do see some of the people here at tech meetups. I go to dinner at Lisa's house. <laughs> And also, I guess I would add that um, as someone who instigated this, I felt responsible even though I live in San Francisco and they're in Portland. And so I've always just tried to make sure that everyone knows they can reach out to me for things. I've given some job recommendations, like Adam mentioned, we've done our mentoring sessions. Um, I don't know, pretty much like try to cheer cheerlead from afar. But, but part of the objective was to be able to drop into a town and create an open source, a, a, a diverse and interesting and engaged open source community and and leave it to thrive. And I think, it, I hope that it's pretty clear that, I think that they have done that. Uh, I think we can do one more question and soon there's someone behind you who hasn't asked one. Yes, please. I'm so excited um, by what you've accomplished because I saw the introduction last year. I'm more curious uh, about like lessons learned for those who want to repeat this or, or learn from this because so much attention is more on teaching kids as opposed to what you're accomplishing with working adults. From the organizer's perspective, sort of how many applicants did you have? What were you looking for? And sort of did you, were you able to reach your, your, the goal of your mission? Those are really great questions. And I would love for more people to try to take on teaching adults because it's a pet. Um, peeve of mine that so much stuff is focused on children like we can't fix some problems with people right now who want to pivot into this or who deserve to feel like they're being valued for their knowledge and their previous life experience um, and I just want to say that all the people here today and the ones who aren't here today the very first day we spent together some of them were surprised that we didn't get right into like hacker type coding you know and what we did instead was this strength building exercise where you learn your own strengths and you are able to express them to each other and the reason for that was to make sure that everyone was aware that they aren't blank slates they are coming in with previous experiences and skills and they're going to be working from those not in the absence of those um, so the main things about doing something like this uh, well the sponsorship was huge like Mozilla paying I, I invent I just picked an, a number out of nowhere and then budgeted to it and I was able to get that money um, but I have to say it worked out to less than five thousand dollars a head 
for these people to do six weeks where they got a computer, they were fed, they were paid. Some of that is because I used Mozilla Office Space, so I didn't have to pay for a space. That ended up actually being the barrier that caused the next one not to happen, because it's hard to find a space in a town you don't live in and to get someone to give up a space for six full weeks. Um, so I was trying to do the, the second one in New Orleans, and that didn't work out. Um, and again, it was off the side of my desk, uh, which also means I was getting paid to do this without putting that in the budget. So know that, like those are the two main things that would impact a budget like this, is that my pay and the space weren't in it. But the food, the laptops, the uh, pay of the people in the program Child all were. Childcare, transportation. Paying my co-teacher, whatever she asked for, that was in there too. Like these things were really important and they're really valuable. So I don't recommend doing this without doing all those things. Um, but, but, you know, so I know actually how much it would be to bring in a second person who's getting paid instead of just whatever I was making. Um, and I think, you know, there was a budget for space for New Orleans, uh, but we just couldn't find a space to book. Uh, so yeah, travel, childcare, travel, like transit, childcare. Food, food, laptops. Laptops. I feel like there was something else. There's a lot of snacks. Yeah, we didn't find a snack. And then, uh, so, so the main thing I would say, like, to do something like this again, and all of the stuff that we did is in a Git repo publicly. So all of our daily agendas are there, and what people did, and everyone wrote blog posts and made them. Um, so they wrote blog posts about their progress, and Mozilla's bug tracker is open too. If people want to take Mozilla bugs and fix them, um, people are available on IRC to uh, mentor. Um, I think mainly, if this was to happen again, if someone had a space and was committed to it, you could find sponsors to fill up what was needed to make it. And Lisa has a blog that she started before Ascend. She literally blogs every day, because she wanted to do that to just sort of track her journey. So, I mean, it's detailed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that, Does, did that answer all of them? What you were looking for in a fellow, if you had more applicants than the oh, actual right. oh yeah, in the application uh, process. So because of, uh, so before Open Source Bridge happened last year, I had three applicants like Adam, Jessica, and like one other person who I don't think ever, I don't think the other person made it into the program. Uh, so after Open Source Bridge, that climbed up to 44 by the time the deadline passed, which is great because I had room for 20. And there was a bar to get in, which was to do this Code Academy JavaScript course online and to send a link proving that you had completed it. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to actually make sure that people meet that bar. The people who didn't complete that had a harder time in the class. And for some of them, their, what their, their version of success is may be a little different because it was a little more overwhelming. Um, I'm thinking of, of a couple of people in particular who unfortunately aren't here today to talk about that from their own experience, but I think that it was really, uh, if I did it again, I actually might not have accepted that. Like I might not have just said, like, I have room for 20 people, I have to have 20 people. I might have just done it with the 18 or, or the 17 that did actually successfully finish that part. Um, and so, yeah, so like less than half of the people managed to make it in. There was definitely some ways, I, I love my cohort, let me just say this right now. There are some ways in which I didn't meet my own goals for this program, and part of those, again, were a symptom of me not living here and of it, me not having time. We did outreach. Uh, my coworker at Mozilla Dino helped me do outreach to pr uh, programs in Portland that targeted um, youth of color. There's a place called PEAR, like P-E-A-R, and there was another social service type place. Um, I got applicants from there and not a single one of them responded to the second round, which was to do the Code Academy thing. So there was something, there was a disconnect there and I, w I never had time to address it. We were moving too quickly and I went ahead with who we had. I was disappointed in that. Um, and I'm also disappointed that there were three trans women in this program and none of them got out internships or as far as I know, none have gotten jobs post program. So. Those, those are areas where I really wanted to focus, and t for me, that I wasn't successful enough there, and I'm still trying to figure out like what I would do differently next time. All right, I'm, we're getting the time signal, so thank you. Um, yeah, so you can go, sorry, 
you can go to ascendproject.org if you want to find the Git repo and look at any of the blog posts and the material. There's still a call up there for the New Orleans Ascend, which isn't happening, so just ignore that part. But that's where the materials are, and you can reach out through that, too. There's an email address. And also, if you go to error.mozilla.org, there's a channel called Ascend, and all of these folks have videos on there where they did a one-minute presentation at the end of the program about what their experience was, and they're amazing, especially Becky Scheffler's. LAUGHTER